Dean Dark is an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure that is intended for older audiences. Content warnings can be found in the episode descriptions. Hello and welcome to Dean Dark, a comedy horror adventure real play podcast loosely based on Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition and starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Danger Dan Jers, and I am your host slash Crypt Keeper. Hello, I am Grayson. I play Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man. Uh, so, hey guys, I'm happy to be here for the very first TPK. <laughs> and the thing that we've been kind of like leading up to is kind of here. Last episode, Jack burnt down the uh, ethereal sanitarium, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> uh, I... I mean, Jack just feels a lot better after doing that. Uh, I found a mixture in one of the previous episodes, put it on like uh, some dry material and lit it aflame. And oh, it was glorious. <laughs> Jack was very happy after not seeing the fire, but knowing that the place is up in smoke now. And then we happen to be at this castle, Warwick Castle in the Ethereal Plane. Didn't realize it was the Ethereal Plane until... I think towards the end of the episode. Uh, you were in the ethereal plane I, the whole I time. I honestly <laughs> had to have missed that entire thing. I was like... Did the spooky ghosts not tip you off? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly just thought the spooky ghosts were here in the material plane. The and spooky then I thought, ghosts are the ethereal plane, my dude. Yeah, you were in their house. <laughs> you know what? Poltergeists are a thing and they can fuck around with shit in the material plane. They can deck you with a chair. Exactly. And for the most part, I was just kind of like, cool. I think everyone else might be hallucinating. Yeah, but not you. I already had my hallucinations. So I was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm just not getting picked on. That's fine by me. Hello, I'm Jordan. I play Larry Talbot, the lycanthropic warlock. And last time we came out of the portal, Larry had a new, fresh outlook on life. Things were going great. Yeah, I did get dunked on by some furniture pieces, and Mary helped me out, but I uh, poofed into some smoke, and I found some interesting items, one that I will investigate when we have a moment. But we didn't really have a moment, because even in the ethereal plane, you can still light things on fire, and things went up in flames. But Larry wasn't worrying about it. He was feeling good. He did get a sense that Emotep was really trying to help the spirits of the place. So even though everything was on fire and a lot of our group was going to escape, Larry went to go help out some of the ghosts. And he was very surprised and kind of comforted and warmed that Carmilla came with him without knowing that Larry had an escape plan ready. So I was like, all right, that's so nice. We went out, we helped some of the spirits be able to pass on before the place went completely in flames, and we teleported out of there. Hello, I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy. So last week, we came out into the ethereal plane because that's definitely what it was, Grace. And it was definitely <laughs> the ethereal plane. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Imhotep was really wanting to help as many of the ghosts as he could and was kind of upset that he couldn't and was even more upset when he saw the big stream of spooky ghosties being pulled into Warwick Castle, not being allowed to pass on. And ooh, -wee, <laughs> ooh we got some words with Rainer. We can have some words. You're in big trouble, Mr. Man. Who, sir? You're taking shit from Osiris? Ooh, that's no boy now. Yeah, you're gonna get a spanking. Oh my god. You're gonna get a very sternly worded letter. Yes. And then we're gonna leave happily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happily in one piece. Hello, everyone. I'm Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. Last session, I was so cool and sneaky that I moved completely unbothered all the way through the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't set off every possible trap and encounter. Definitely. Didn't get possessed Definitely a few didn't have times. to use several spells. And then I was super nice to Imhotep <laughs> and not a total bastard. <laughs> Never. You? No. That's okay. I was totally not petty at all, so it's fine. <laughs> anyway, I'm them. super glad that I... I teed us all up for success, heading into what is the most important encounter so far. 
Mm-hmm. Hello, I am Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our party's barbarian. And last time I made the most awesome, bodacious, righteous Ooh. entrances ever. And no one saw it. Oh, which maybe next time. Yeah. Oh, well, that happens. But then at least I knew we were in a different plane of existence with a bunch of spooky freaking ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and we got through that area full of spooky ghosts and we're staring down Warwick Castle where Renfield, a.k.a. Rainer, is waiting for us. And oh, Mary Frankenstein about ready to separate a head from a body. Heck yeah, dude. Nice. I'll give you three guesses on whose head it is and the first two don't count. <laughs> All right, well, since they're throwaway <laughs> guesses, uh, everybody lay them out. I think Emotep is the easiest, because then you could just put it back. That's so, so that's going to be my first guess. <laughs> and then because... Yeah, I was just going to say, because that can happen twice. I mean, he's going to think that he missed, so he's going to just try and do it again. So there's there's the two throwaway. Yeah. So the two throwaway are Emotep and Emotep. Yep. Right. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Hey guys, uh, Janae Pellerin here as Countess Malarca Carmilla Karnstein, vampiric spawn slash blood hunter. All right, so last time we had a really uh, interesting and super fun, happy time at the McDonald's play place (laughs) in the (laughs) ball pit of hell. And uh, yeah, that was so great. And then I also loved how um, people not only were passing through us, but we're greeted by this enormous, completely, I mean, really just tasteless architecture. I, really, he could have done a much better job <laughs> to build his castle. But <laughs> we're here now. And, you know, Carmilla's died once. Well, what's another permakill, you know? What's, what's <laughs> so going off of that energy, yeah. let's dive right we- into it. Before we start, couple of things. One, I am bringing back the real world time limit. It is currently about 2.20 at 4.50, so you have roughly two and a half hours. Something's gonna happen. Mm, I wonder. Uh Uh-oh. A snack break? (laughs) A snack break. We all go back to the cereal plane. Yeah, we leave. Oh, no. (laughs) Also, a thing that I feel is only fair to warn you about. If you cannot interrupt the resurrection of Dracula, mm-hmm. and he is a factor, you are not prepared to fight him. Mm, no. Whimper. So, with that in mind, use all the tricks in your book, try to outwit me, because you won't be able to outmuscle me on that front. Okay. Dracula's super ripped. I know. Carmilla's the one who turned him. <laughs> she would know. As we were walking up, I actually kind of want to do that. <laughs> Dracula, a bit. you big nerd. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dracula, you big nerd with the fucking money. No. Um, <laughs> that is a discussion I want to have with Carmilla. We'll find a more appropriate time to do that, though. Like, what was he like? Last thing before we get into the gameplay proper Jordan, card of the day. Okay. Oh, God, please get the moon. I want the moon. I'm at the bottom of my deck. I have two cards left to pull. And one of them is the moon. One of them is the moon. We (gasps) have the moon card. So at any point in this debacle, I can werewolf out. I don't know how we turn it off. Oh, good. That is to be discovered. So I think that's a last ditch effort if we need it. That's the answer. (laughs) That is a GTFO card. Honestly? That is the, you have to outwit me, you cannot outmuscle me. (laughs) Ha ha. We have the wolf. We have the wolf. I'm still nervous about that. But, but Dan, for a fun flavor thing, if you had to pick one of the major arcana tarot to represent Dracula, I have to ask which one is it? Well, I would say the Emperor. Oh, yeah. That's what I was thinking, too, That's personally. That's so freaking brilliant. Tarot is real, y'all. The last two cards of my deck that I shuffled back at the end of the werewolf arc are the moon and the emperor. Good son of a Hell bitch. Yes. I'm so ready for this. I'm so excited. <laughs> Wait, what does the Emperor do? Emperor is just, you know, it's one of the run of the mill okay. other ones. I think I've pulled it before. It's the one that gives you advantage on intimidation, right? That is correct. And I can use the command spell. Try and scare Dracula. Yeah, I'll command him. I'm sure that will work. But no, I'm for sure going to take the moon. 
whether I survive long enough to use it or <laughs> if things hit the fan hard enough that I'm like, all right, who cares? Let's pull out the last method. Man, all right, here's the mid-season finale. Oh, it's the finale <laughs> finale. <laughs> all right, uh, let's stop dawdling, though, because we do have to do that. It's a real world timer, so we're wasting time. Yes. Dan's like, Wee! no, 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 keep talking. Take your time. <laughs> so, as you have made your way through the parting crowds that are leaving for the day, as the castle is being closed off to visitors and you maneuver your way through the spirits as this river of souls is pouring through this castle. You make your way into the front entryway. And what you see immediately before you, there is a front ticket desk that has a little ceramic bowl on it filled with brochures and the like. And on the doors on either side of it, some ethereal wards in place that are blocking the front couple of entryways you are expected and guarded against. There is, to the north of you and to the west of you, barriers of force that are blocking the doorways leading further into the castle. Off to your east, there is a small chapel room. Go ahead and roll either Perception or Arcana. I just got a net 20. Nice. Heck yeah. I just got a 13. 15. 17 arcana. Well, I got an unnatural 20 on my arcana. 11 perception. I'll go from lowest to highest. So with the 11 and the 13, you can see looking around through this area, these walls of force, there's not really any way that you are armed to be able to get around them. For the middling rolls, you get a familiar feeling of energy and some of those ethereal whispers spilling out from this small chapel off to your east. With the unnatural 20, Imhotep, you immediately identify another one of these portals between planes of existence. Oh. Jack, with your nat 20, you can feel this energy is pervading this entire floor of the castle. And you can tell that there has been an awful lot of hopping back and forth between planes of existence on this floor of this castle. So does that mean that I'm, I know that there's going to be things that stop us? It would seem that way. Um, I'm going into the chapel, and I'm going to go and investigate this portal. I just look around and go, I think he's been inspecting us. Yeah, it sure looks it. No snacks? No wine? No no charcuterie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> leans back out of the chapel. Can you even enjoy those anymore? I'm going to... I think there's a desk over here, and I'm going to just start rifling through it to see if there's maybe a What password. I will say, because you rolled a nat 20 on your initial perception or arcana, whichever it was you rolled for, going through this desk, you're having a hard time interacting with it since it isn't existing on the plane that you're in, but you are able to, with some concerted effort and force, open up the cabinets and start rifling through, and you find some layout maps, and you can see that... The quickest way to get to the throne room that is otherwise closed off to all visitors and is not part of the standard tour. There is a passageway through the undercroft of the castle in the torture basement. (laughs) Of course, of course, it's the torture basement. Well, you know what, guys? The game is called Dungeons and Dragons. If we're not going through a dungeon, what are we doing? The the gardens, perhaps? And the pathway to get to the undercroft of the castle is directly north of you. Uh Okay, yeah, that was going to be my question. So while he's doing that, I want to more directly investigate the portal in the chapel. Go ahead and roll investigation. That's a four. Oh, buddy. I poke it with a stick. (laughs) With a four, as you poke it with a stick, you immediately are pulled to the other side of the portal. Whoa! I want to rush in and see where the hell he went. (laughs) Well, shit. Well, um, um, can can they hear me through the portal? Uh, What do you want to say? No, they can't hear you. 
<laughs> I don't even know where you sent me. Oh, do I do the same thing? Um, I'm conflicted because you've got the wards on the doors, which I'm like, I could probably dispel magic those, but I only have two spell slots. And we just started. So. How do you think I feel? I don't have my turn undead anymore. Oh, crap. I think I'm. <laughs> am I going to do the exact same thing? I'm going to stick my cane through the portal. Roll Arcana. Okay. Mary, do you want me to hold on to you so you don't get sucked through? Sure. You can see I'm I'm going at it very tentatively with the Oh, cane. don't we have some rope? Uh, this might, I don't know. Uh, 17 plus three. That's an unnatural 20. Nice. With an unnatural 20. Larry, as you poke your cane through the other side, you make contact with the exact same wall that this portal is affixed to. And you can get the sense from its solidity and its materiality. (laughs) I see what you're doing there. That this portal leads to the same place in the material plane. Oh, okay. Great. I peek my head through and see if I can see Emotep. I'm holding on to him. Yeah, he's got my waist. I'm poking my head through. I don't know if anyone wants to do anything else in the meantime. Jack is going to pull out the... Dan. Yes. With the holy water that I have, is there like a cork on it or how is everything kept together? It's a little bottle with a screw on cap. Okay. Um, Dasani water bottles. (laughs) I'm going to start working on something and uh, just taking the ceramic bowl... I'll smash it and then start taking some of the smaller pieces and trying to grind them up into almost a powder so that way I can put the powder inside the flask itself. So uh, explain that to me one more time just because I didn't quite follow. Oh, cheater, since it's real time. (laughs) (laughs) Ceramic powder in Dasani Mm -hmm. water bottle? Yes. Okay. (laughs) As you are doing that, Imhotep, where you have stumbled into, you see the same exact chapel that you were standing in moments ago, but with the color having returned to the world. And as you are looking around through this room, you can see the portal open behind you. And there is an open book that is at the altar that some of the energy of this portal is drawing power from. Go ahead and roll Arcana. And while you're rolling that, Larry... As you're poking your head out through, you can see the same thing. You see the same room, and if you look out to the entryway that you came in from, those walls of force in the material plane are non-existent. Oh, well, that's helpful. Um, I want to reach back and kind of, like, tap Mary on the hand and give a thumbs up, and... Uh, when he lets me go, I would like to step through the portal. I let go. My Arcana check was a 10. With a 10, something about this book is generating this portal. Mm. Can I help him in any way? Go ahead and you roll Arcana, Larry. All right, magic buddies, let's go. Larry flips the first page. says, Dear Diary. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, That's a 15, Arcana? With a 15, you can see a sigil on the front page of this book. And hidden on the wall, there is often a corner covered up by pews. That same sigil is drawn on the wall and it is giving off a slight glow. I I want to point that out to Emotep and be like, I I, I think the source of this is uh, that that sigil over there. He looks over to where Larry is pointing and makes his way over to the sigil. Do we believe we will trap our friends on the other side if I was to, you know, and he kind of makes a smudging with his hand motion. I think we're better off leaving it oh, as they all pop through. <laughs> as soon as he turns around, everybody's flooding through the portal. Like, do you think we'd be willing to? Tra- oh, never mind. <laughs> they all came through. Um. Oh, um, I think. I just smudge it. I'm not even going to ask. No, just, I want to grab his hand. I want to stop him from smudging it. Wait, I, I think we should leave it open for now. But in case we're followed by something, then then we smudge. Because I don't know how much we're going to be able to get through on this realm versus the other. Maybe we'll have to jump back and forth. I suppose that makes sense. Imhotep, go ahead and make an arcana roll with advantage. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank God it's the same fucking roll. Awesome. <laughs> 12. Yeah, I had that happen to me before. It's not fun. With a 12, what I will say with that 
you probably don't want to mess with that sigil. I I suppose we will not smudge the sigil. I just let out a big old sigh. Just, <sighs> okay, I, I guess back into the lobby of this plane. All right, I'm going to whip out a trick that I've been completely ignoring. In a meta sense, it's that Aaron can see we're going to be doing a lot of checks. And in a narrative sense, Phantom can see we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bust out the frenetic crescendo. Ooh. Ooh. What's that? Describe the frenetic crescendo. <laughs> As of the sixth level, sorry that I've been sitting on it so long, everybody. <laughs> you can use your action to expend any number of uses of your bardic inspiration feature. For each expended use, you can immediately grant a bardic inspiration die to a creature other than yourself. So I'm just going to start spraying them out all at once, <laughs> hopefully to save a little time in doing individualized ones. That's fair. Oh, cool. So yeah, you can just scatter shot bardic inspiration. What happens is everyone freezes like a community theater play. So it's like bad freezing. They're all still breathing really heavily and like kind of wobbling a little bit. Well, yeah, the wobble. And I'm going to turn to face the audience. Obviously, we're filmed in front of a live studio audience. And I'm going to do the tap dance number from Skimbleshanks, yes! the railway cat. And then I sing. I love him. Skimbleshanks, the Another cat. Weber musical. Uh, and as the audience tosses bouquets on, a bouquet lands in Invisible Man's hands, Imhotep's hands, and uh, Janae's hands. Carmilla's. And that's the Bardic Inspiration. Carmilla's. Aaron, you better No, I, I mailed it all the way to the Airbnb. Yeah, she's in the studio audience, of course. Yeah, I am the studio audience. She'd never miss this. Yeah, but yes, and Carmilla too, uh, so I guess. Imhotep holds this bouquet of flowers looks around awkwardly for the audience that threw it as a thank you i will be here all night <laughs> carmilla has already found a vase <laughs> i'm just gonna take my top hat and put the flowers inside the top hat and then put the hat back on you put it in the holy water <laughs> no i have plans for that it's like a bomb <laughs> speaking of carmilla yes when we all first met up Abraham gave me this, and I hold up the uh, flask of holy water. I'm going with bare basic knowledge, and I just want to make sure of this. Holy water does not do a lot health-wise for you, correct? You know, it, it's not so much that. It's like eating um, a very, very spicy taco sauce. Good to know. Taco sauce? She's very strangely world-traveled. <laughs> Jalisco was a hell of a place. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanically, it will deal 2d6 acid damage. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, that's bad. That's awesome. real bad. Mary, Larry, uh, I might need your help with this one. What do you need? Yes. Both of you can generate electricity, correct? Yeah. With the particles of ceramic that I put in here, we can use electrolysis, and that will actually create a somewhat poison cloud of holy water. I've never heard of that spell. What, what's that? <laughs> I was about to say, this sounds something that I have never heard of. It's the either. magic of science. Oh my God, is this a vampire <laughs> humidifier? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Above table, yes. A literal holy water hand grenade. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, I thought about this when Dan said that the top layer of the lake burnt off. And I was trying to figure out what process that was. And then I remembered what it was, and it was electrolysis. And I was like, oh my god, I have holy water. If we ever fight like a whole bunch of vampires, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> science man is doing science. I want to note it. My favorite thing about this is that it would be Jack who finds the scientific way to destroy a vampire. <laughs> That's so good. I know. Amazing. Or to, you know, deal it 2d6 acid damage. Hey, every little bit helps. <laughs> As long as it interrupts the process, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going for. So uh, back to the conversation. All right, I, I want to clarify something real quick. I did not get a bouquet right. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> yeah, I look over there. I put my arm on her shoulder. I was like, it's okay. I wanted one too. Oh, you also didn't get a bouquet? No. I only get three, all right? God damn. What the heck, dude? Oh, <laughs> three best friends, I see. Carmilla <laughs> takes two of the roses out of the bouquet and hands one to Larry and to Mary. Thank you, Carmilla. Uh, mechanically speaking, they do feel much less inspired. Yes, they won't work. <laughs> um, I put on my boutonniere. Mm -hmm. I will cherish this. And I'm I'll... tempted to give you negative bardic inspiration. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, no! I'm already hurt. <laughs> So, Larry and Mary, uh, when I need you to, 
I'm probably going to ask you to hit this flask with some electricity. All right, you got it. I could do that. Um, Carmilla, you will not want to be in this cloud. No, I, uh, I will be far, far away. And then I'm just going to put it in a different pocket than where Kilmarnock is. Oh, speaking of, uh, just a heads up, if we end up having to do any type of fighting, Kilmarnock is not going to be of any use in the ethereal plane. Okay, understood. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> oh, no, dude. What did you do? <laughs> Obviously, he whipped out Kilmarnock in the ethereal plane. Oh, I feel like that's oh, how pretty straightforward. I look over to Jack and like, how much time do we have left with him before he turns on us completely? As far as I know, we still have about 58 um, minutes. No, okay, 58 is not that bad. He turned on you in one minute? <laughs> no, we still have 58 minutes with him. As per the last fight, I'd like to do some investigating on these doors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you make your way back into the general entryway to the north of you, there are some iron gates that are shut, chained and locked up for the night leading north to your west. There is a large wooden door that is locked. Um, I look at the chained and barred gate, and I only rolled like a 10, so I just, I'm baffled. I know how magic works. I don't know how locks work. <laughs> Give me the lock a little bit. Mary, do you still have that key? I do. Mary, do you still have those big muscles? Uh -oh. I do. <laughs> 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 well, I know which door you're going for then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I crack my knuckles and I try to force the door open. Roll strength. Man, I'm so glad that I have a lock picking set. I'm sure we'll use it. I'm just I'm just so useful here. Phantom just looks at your arms disappointed though. Aww. I look over to check. I'm like, this is more fun. <laughs> that is a natural 20. Yes! Good. Good. Yeah. Let's Ooh. go! You still have those big muscles. With a nat 20, you are able to break your way through the chains that are holding this gate shut. It does make a considerable amount of noise, but you have passed through these gates. <laughs> I just take the chains and just with one big mighty, I just break the lock in the cleanest snap that you've ever heard and the gates flung open with my arms that stretch just like in Westerns when they open the doors of a saloon like that. Boom. Can I pop my head into this room to the west? It's locked. Which you will have a lock picking oh. kit. <laughs> sure. I'll pick the lock. Using a D6, Try to land between 16 and 18. Okay. Uh, I got a 17. With a 17, you are able to get the door open and you make your way into, um, this is general servants quarters. There is some fake food splayed out on the table and there is another door to you to the north. For everyone else, as you are making your way past where the iron gates are, there are a couple of doors on either side of you to the west and to the east, and continuing straight north, the path down into the dungeon is blocked by a raised ramp. Everyone roll perception. Uh, yeah, I rolled a 24 on my perception. Damn. <laughs> the DC was 32, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. 14. Mine was an unnatural 20, thank God. So proud of you guys, rolling high and kicking ass. I know, we're rolling high right now, so that way when we get into the real thick of it, we're just going to be fucked. I expected so much more pushback from the fact I had frenetic crescendo for the whole gore fight and did not <laughs> help any of you. I think it's the fact that we don't know what it can possibly do, and then when you told us, we're like, oh... Okay, well, at least we have it now. <laughs> yeah, I think right now. <laughs> I have like two other feats I've never used to help any of you. Oh, you did. Oh, my God. Uh, same. <laughs> Six. Uh, Larry, you don't notice anything. No, of course not. <laughs> Imhotep, with your unnatural 20, you can see that this raised ramp is chained up with chains that are high above you going into adjoining rooms on either side. They are just barely along the ceiling edge. There is a very small gap between where the wall cutting off the adjoining room ends 
and where the chain slithers out onto the ceiling and grapples onto this ramp. Mary, with your 24, you hear footsteps oncoming uh, from mm-hmm. the east. Oh, shit. Okay. East. Um, guys, um, I might have messed up with the gate because someone's coming. So you're saying we need to move quickly? Yes. We need to move very quickly. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, Mary, will you launch Carmilla into, cause, you know, she only weighs 100 pounds wet. <laughs> so could you launch Carmilla into where the chains are and I could get them down? Is that possible? Are there like little rotating wheels or something that that makes it lift down? Lift down. <laughs> <laughs> we get you, we get you. From what you can see, the bulk of the controls on these chains are in the two adjoining rooms on either side. Mm. Okay. Control is for losers. Ooh. Phantom's going to draw his crossbow, and I'm going to try and shoot one of the chains. All right, roll a crossbow attack at disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> it is small. It's a thin target. I would like to start looking at the door or doing whatever I can. So, Invisible Man, in this separate room... The door to the north of you is unlocked. And as you look your way through, you see a couple of corridors that make their way down to a large hallway. And you can see very faintly off in the distance a robed figure rounding the corner. Mm, Don't like that. Ooh. Would an 11 do it? An 11 would not do it. Inspiration. Would a 19 do it? Hey! With a 19... He doesn't want it to. You are able to loosen it. I will give the chains an HP. (laughs) And then I have a stupid idea to help loosen the other chain. Yes, Larry, yes! (laughs) And while you guys are doing this, I'm going to roll a straight D20. Ah. (laughs) I rolled a 19. Shit. So as you are throwing yourselves at this ramp, (laughs) firing off arrows wantonly at the chains. Yes. In the room immediately to your east, a cultist pops her head in, sees all of the commotion, turns and runs. I chase her and tackle her down so she doesn't raise the alarm. Roll athletics. Yeah, athletics, come on, come on. 17. With a 17, you are able to tackle her in place. And you can see in this new hallway that you've chased her out into, immediately to your north are two other robed figures. Oh, shit. Roll stealth. That is a 12. (laughs) With a 12, the two cultists are interrupted by the sound of you slamming another cultist into the ground. I look up and I'm going, uh, she owes me five coin. Deception check. Deception, please. Roll deception at disadvantage. (laughs) No (laughs) shit. I meant it as a joke. You're not wearing the uniform. They're not going to believe you. That's what the five coin is for. Wait a minute. Hey, what about those quarters? Can we, um, get some cultist robes? I, uh, rolled a 12 on my deception. Oh, buddy. With your 12, they look to each other, squint, look back at you, and one of them says, Margaret always pays her debts back in full. (laughs) And the four of you are rolling initiative. Bummer. I will continue to attack the uh, chain as appropriate. And I've got a question. So my cantrip infestation summons mites, fleas, and other parasites termites to eat through chains well it's connected to these like wooden boards right i suppose it is a solid wooden ramp yeah so if i have the termites eat the base of where the chains connect to the wood i'll entertain the notion so describe infestation infestation you cause a cloud of mites fleas and other parasites to appear momentarily on one creature i'll see if you'll Uh, if that works or not, that you see within range, the target must succeed in a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 poison damage, blah, 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 blah. Use your spellcasting modifier as an attack roll against it. 
So that was a 14 to hit the bridge. With a 14 on this bridge, <laughs> you toss the termite infestation mm -hmm. and they start to gather around and gnaw away at the wood near where it is connected to these chains. Yeah, I want to flavor it that I just kind of swirl some dust into my hand and they turn into the little creepy crawlies and I just kind of blow them at the bridge. And with a 14, you can tell that at the rate they're going, they will be able to gnaw through this wood in about two hours. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'll let them work for a minute and uh, maybe we'll kick down the bridge in a little bit. Maybe it'll be loosened. Can I join? Yes, I'm going to put you at the bottom of the turn order. That's fair. So I will let Mary, you go ahead and take your turn first. And then we'll resolve anything else that other people are doing. Okay, well, I see them draw the scimitars. I'm like, ah, damn it. So I look down at, I guess, Margaret, and I punch her in the face to knock her out. Okay, so that is an unarmed strike. So go ahead and roll strength. 18. That hits, and you will deal your strength plus one in damage. Four. Um, Jack's going to open up the door, see that they're getting into a fight. And then look at Larry, Phantom, and Carmilla and let them know that I've got a pathway back over here. Carmilla would like to go see if she can raid the closet of the quarters. Go ahead and roll investigation. And in the meantime, Jack, roll perception. Then Mary, it's still your turn in the combat. So that is one attack as your unarmed strike. Uh, does that knock her out cold or is she still awake? She is still awake. Okay, um, well, I take out my sword and I just, do I want to, above table, guys, do you want me to kill cultists or do you want me to try and keep them alive? No, are they like normal human people or like, what are they? These are, as far as you can tell, humans. Uh... Well, I'm exceptionally evil, so like, kill yeah, them. Yeah, that aligns to whatever your your character's morality is. Make your own decision, Ben. Uh, well, you know what? I'm just going to try and punch Margaret again. What I will say, too, is you can declare an attack to be non-lethal. Okay. So you can do combat as normal, but as long as you specify that you are doing non-lethal damage, you will not kill them outright. All right. Well, then instead of punching her again, I take out my sword and I use the pommel of my sword to hit her in the forehead to try and just knock her out. <laughs> go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. <laughs> Pretty much. I'll accept that. Roll a long sword attack. That's a nat 20. All right, so with a nat 20, go ahead and roll your damage and double it. Nine damage. And is that plus the damage that your longsword does? Yeah, because the damage is 1d8 plus 3. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm dumb. Yeah, yeah, 12. So you deal your 12 damage. You still have a bonus action if you choose to use it. Otherwise, that will end your turn. Uh, do I see Imhotep behind me or? That's up to Imhotep. Uh, I'm, I'm making my way over. I have my Kopesh drawn already. All right, so I turn around, I see you, I yell, cultists, and I just point. Mary, as you turn and point and yell, cultists, the cultists that are on rushing look a little offended. They point at you and say, big ugly zombie guy. <laughs> I turn to the cultists, I'm like, that is so offensive. Construct, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Or should I maybe change your name from cultists to dead bodies? <laughs> we prefer fanatics. Okay, okay. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, one time coming, we're gonna go, don't worry, I'll cast, I'll cast them, raise dead and turn them into the zombies. <laughs> All of this is punctuated by the thuds of crossbow bolts just whacking into the wall as they miss the chain. <laughs> Thud. What was your roll to attack for that, Phantom? 17. And once upon a time, you asked Jack to roll perception. Yes. Uh, I I got a, I got a six. With your six perception. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of commotion happening behind you. Fantastic. I'm going to keep ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 21, a natural 21 for perception. Carmilla, with your unnatural 21, you do find a couple of cultist robes. You also find another one of those sigils that you saw in the chapel Ooh. that matched the book. Okay. I wonder if we... Bring the book to these different sigils if it will open up portals for us. Oh. What I will say with a 21, as long as you are on this floor of the castle and in proximity to these sigils, you can use that book to hop back and forth 
between the ethereal plane and the material plane, mm -hmm. it will take you six seconds to do so. So in combat, it would be one okay. round. Out of combat, it's six seconds. Phantom, with your 17, you are able to hit the chain again, and it wobbles a bit and strains slightly, but is still holding firm. God damn it. And you can see as it is wobbling that the adjoining room next to you is where the chain is slamming up against and where it is affixed to. I don't want to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, as you are making your way up the side hallway and are sneaking around and investigating where this cultist was walking past and doing their patrol, you pass by a suit of armor, and as you are examining it, it is a very highly decorated, entirely plate mail knight with sword, and it is there again as a display and decoration for tourists traveling and making their way through. Nothing seems to be out of the ordinary about it as you are glancing on it as is. Mm, ethereal plane, I bet. I'll uh, very slowly poke my head around the corner to see if I see the cultist coming. As you poke your head around the corner, roll perception. And then in the meantime, I'm jumping back over to the combat where the cultists are going to take their turn. So first, the one that is pinned down. Rolled a six. <laughs> attempts to reach for the scimitar, but hands are pinned firmly to the ground and cannot squirm and escape past the grasp. The other two are going to advance on you, Mary, and similarly make their attack. Bring it on, you little bitches. One of them rolled a seven. The other rolled a nat 20. Oh, Good. well, shit. Well, you told them to come on. Here they come. They are. <laughs> they follow instruction. They're fanatics. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Well, one anyway. Yeah. There we go. There we go. One of them's going to whiff completely. The other is going to hit you for 12 damage. Yeah. That will be cut in half because it's you. Yay. <laughs> so you will take six damage. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Put the band-aid on it and kiss it better later. All right. So that's it for that. So invisible man, I'm going to jump back to you real quick. What was your perception? I got a 16 on perception. With a 16 perception, as you look around the corner, you see that the cultist has rounded another corner, but you do see a series of rooms that are splayed out decoratively, one of which has a treasure chest. Ooh. No. <laughs> That's, mm, my inner thief. <laughs> yeah. Grayson, we talked about this. Yeah, and then you're fighting. Do what your heart desires. Yeah, Mary wanted to fight. I want to loot. I want to fight the Rainer, not these cultists. Oh, look at me. I'm Frankenstein. Bring it on. <laughs> okay, go touch the treasure chest that will eat you. Will do. Twang. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a mimic. Don't be, be a, a mimic. mimic. Don't, Don't be, be a mimic. mimic. I want to look at this because I'm thinking of the museum thing. Yeah, mimic. Wondering if this is going to come to life. So Roll sleight of hand. Mm, yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> And in the meantime, <laughs> Phantom, roll another crossbow attack. Hell yeah. Five. So you hear a weird crunching sound of a bolt on brick, and then you hear, fuck, god damn it. <laughs> and then also in the meantime, Imhotep, it is your turn in combat. I'm going to toll the dead at the cultist that Mary has already punched. Okay, so go ahead and is that a to hit or is that a save? Uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay. DC 15. And that is a 14. Okay, cool. So she's going to take 16 necrotic damage as I melt her skin off because I'm a good person like that. Non-lethally. Yes, of course, of course. Non-lethally, of course. You know, I, as, as I do all these horrible things to her in Minecraft. In Minecraft? <laughs> what? It's a YouTube terms of service joke from like four years ago. <laughs> okay, well, either way, that hits her very hard. And as her life force is drained out of her, she is looking incredibly unstable and flailing around with the little bit of movement she has with her hands, reaches for a coin pouch mm -hmm. and tosses up five coins <laughs> and says, I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't remember owing you anything, but here, take it, take it, just go. <laughs> Poor Margaret. Margaret, so good. How'd she end up with this crew? I pick up two. All right, I know. I'll pick up two later. Uh, we're still in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Puts them back on the ground. 
Then Imhotep, does that end your turn? Um, I can't really move much, so yeah. Keep this one alive. I'll deal with these bozos right here. Oh, you mean the one that's skin is currently falling off of the body? Yes, we might need her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you say we might eat her? No, I said need. N-E-E-D. Need. Roll intimidation with advantage. <laughs> intimidation with you advantage. Fuck it, I'll roll intimidation with advantage. Why not? 18. With an 18, the other two cultists start looking real uncomfortable. They look to each other and say, Did he say he's going to eat us? <laughs> One of them begins to back away, but has not disengaged yet. <laughs> the other is still holding firm and is trying to is trying to reach for Margaret to pull her out of the fray. In the meantime, Invisible Man, what was your sleight of hand? I did get a modified 19. With a 19, you open up the chest and find 10 gold. Hey. Hey. Fantastic. I'll load up on that, and then I want to keep an ear out for the cultists that I'm potentially behind. Okay, so as you make your way to the end of the hallway and turn another corner, you can see a large circular room starts to open up, and it's a curved hallway that forks off in two directions, directly ahead of you around a rounded set of stairs coming down the other side is this cultist who is still making his way away from you. Go ahead and roll stealth. And then in the meantime, Larry, it is your turn in the combat. So Larry was really frustrated his bugs didn't work. So he's going to back up. He's going to get a very determined look on his face. And just in his frustration, he's going to start sprinting towards this ramp, this drawbridge. And he's going to try and body it. And he's going to do it with the help of the Amethyst Lodestone for a gravitational thrust. And he's going to just try and barrel this thing down. All right. So go ahead and roll strength with advantage. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Golly, Make me proud, Larry. I hope that phantom weakened the chains for me. Also, Dan, I did roll a natural 20. I was kind of wondering if there was a way to flavor this to where Jack just happens to pull the chain and that way Larry's only up against one chain instead of two. With a nat 20... I will say yes. You make your way down this hallway and it leads directly to the room where the chain is tied and affixed in place. You are able to, with a nat 20, get down there and unwrap that chain. So one of the two chains is down. Since it's not the one Phantom's been shooting, he looks over. What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I rolled a 10 on my strength. As you make impact with this ramp, (gasps) it wiggles. Since it is only being held by one corner, it kind of sways a bit, but it still holds Uh. firm. You have weakened the chain that Phantom has been shooting at this whole time. Yeah, we're so close. (laughs) And that's my turn. So now it is Carmilla. (laughs) I'd like to start handing out robes. Okay, who specifically are you giving robes to? One to Larry, one to Imota, one to Phantom. I would never. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Um, it's funny because Larry, yeah, that makes sense. You, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Amotep, I'm a corpse. Ah, that's fine. He's a really dedicated fanatic. Yeah, you're just very far along in your process. I don't think any of those are going to fit me. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'd have to like sew one for Mary. Actually, I just thought of something. No one grabbed the book and Dan went through that whole explanation. I thought I was going to say it's um, almost as though there's an entire mechanic here that we've completely ignored and is about to be completely irrelevant. I I noticed that I just wasn't going to say anything. (laughs) It is what it is. So back over to Phantom. All right. Come on, please, please, please. Jack's going to keep stealthing behind uh, that cultist. Roll another stealth. 14. 14 is going to miss. Holy shit, these chains are dodgy as hell. (laughs) And I just got another 20. What I'll say, with a 20, you are able to continue unseen following this cultist, who is now approaching the ensuing chaos below of everyone in their combat and is about to rally to their defense. And as you are following behind, you see another chest. Ooh. Uh Press your luck. Do I see anything that might get me to another... uh... Blocking the way to the other room where the chain is secured to 
there is another one of those iron gates that is chained shut. Okay. While the cultists and all of them are distracted with that, I would like to work on that chain. We'll do the lockpicking minigame again. You have to roll exactly 17 using a d6. Uh, all right. And while you are doing that, Imhotep, it is your turn. Margaret is the one that's still being grappled by Mary, right? Yep, who is above table at one HP. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to try and push past Mary if I can and get to the other side. And I'm going to toll the dead this cultist before I look behind them and see there's somebody else there. If it helps, I will. I hear Imhotep coming behind me and I crouch down so he can essentially use my back as a launch board. So Imhotep, that is rad as fuck, but (laughs) is not going to have any sort of mechanical benefit. I get that. I springboard off of Mary's back. Don't get enough momentum, and my other foot comes down on Margaret. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I feel so bad for poor Margaret. How mean do I be here? Don't kill Margaret. No. It's not going to kill Margaret, but Margaret is now in death saves. Margaret! Uh, yeah, I'm still going to use I'm still gonna use Toll the Dead on that one cultist. And they rolled a 19 on their okay, wisdom save. Uh, so she's, she's fine. So over to Larry. Is that chain reachable? If you were to attack with your cane, you would attack with disadvantage. Um, okay. Then I think I'm going to use my Eldritch Blast. Go ahead and roll an Eldritch Blast. And you said I had to roll exactly 17, right? Yes. What happens if I rolled above it? Uh, what part of exactly? If you roll above it, the lock jams. Uh, I, I rolled a 19. The lock jams. <laughs> is, is there any way to, like, clear it or... You could try again at disadvantage. Can we just use the portals? So, uh, Janae, what was that? Oh, I was just... I would like Carmilla to go and, like, check out the book and see their other places. So, like, for example, you were explaining the mechanic. When we go near one of the runes... Let me clarify. Anywhere on this floor, you could use the spell in the book a limitless number of times to hop either to the ethereal plane or from the ethereal plane to the material plane. Okay. I'd like to just grab the book then. Okay, you can do that. Okay. I feel so bad that we just ignored Dan's cool mechanics for this whole dungeon. The explicit mission was outsmart. (laughs) To make myself feel better, I want to look at this chest and see if it's a mimic. (laughs) Roll sleight of hand. Uh, Let's see what happens. And while you're rolling that, Larry, what was the result of that Eldritch Blast? Um, to hit was a 25. A 25, surprisingly, hits. What? Wow. Oh, damn. I know, astonishing, <laughs> really. Uh, what's the... No, it was close. <laughs> um, I want to flavor it as just the frustrations of the mites not working, the body slam not working, commotion is happening, that moon card is burning a hole in his back pocket, so he's just going to let out a huge blast of energy at this change, which coincidentally is 25. All right. And with that enraged Eldritch Blast, (laughs) it sears through the chains that Phantom has been whittling down and the ramp slams downward and is no longer impeding the path down into the castle undercroft. I could have done that. (laughs) (laughs) And then I want to use my movement to make my way back over here to see if I can help these guys. Okay, and Invisible Man, what was your sleight of hand? I got a modified 23. With a 23, you pop open the chest and you see inside of it, you see a severed gloved hand that has the pinky and middle fingers inverted. Where the middle finger should be is a pinky finger. Where the pinky finger should be is a middle finger. Ew. Oh, mm, delightful. Offensive pinkies up. Do I need the hand and the glove? Go ahead and roll either Investigation or Arcana. Well, you know what I'm going to use. <laughs> I got a modified 15. With a 15, as you pull the hand out of the chest and slowly and carefully remove the glove from it, the second the glove is off the hand, the middle finger and pinky finger violently snap back to their appropriate places, and the hand disintegrates. Oh. What is that? I have no idea. 
I'm not going to put it on, but I'm going to put it in one of my <laughs> pockets and I'm going to hold on to it for someone else to identify if anyone can identify it. Cause I have no idea what this does. All I know is that basically I could show them my pinky finger and flip them off. One hell of a pinky <laughs> promise. <laughs> Polite F you. Then Phantom, I see you moving around. What are you up to? Phantom's just going to walk right on down into this undercroft area and, uh, can I see anything as is? As is, you can see essentially a hallway and sloped staircase that is ramping down through an archway. So up ahead of you is the passageway to get into the castle undercroft. I'm just going to go. <laughs> Fuck the team. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So over to Carmilla. I would like to check out the ethereal plane. So I'd like to step through the portal and come out the other way. In the room where the cultist robes are, you open up the book. And as you are pouring over the page and reading over the incantation, another one of these portals whisks you back through into the ethereal plane. And here within the ether, you are on the opposite side of those walls of force mm -hmm. and the world is again in monochrome you are again hearing the whispers of spirits and among them you can see that on this end of things all of the doors that ordinarily would be an impasse are at about 50 percent opacity and with a slight bit of concerted effort you can pass through them neatly ah very nice and as you are making your way down the hallway through the ether, you hear getting increasingly louder, these whispers turning into gasps. And you can see, up ahead to your north, a spectral figure phase through the wall, staring you down with glowing red eyes. It lifts a skeletal finger, points at you, its jaw drops, and it lets out a pained I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a little it's a little freaky. <laughs> and floating its way towards you, a spirit that is draped with an ethereal cloak with an outstretched hand is beginning to beeline directly towards you. Uh, this does not look good. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm gonna slam the book shut and um, stare into my own soul for a second and uh, join the turn order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is now the cultist's turns to react. Does Margaret make a death save? Margaret does make a death save. Poor Margaret. And that is... Come on, Margaret, pull through. A nat one. Oh. Margaret, that's two failures. That is two failures. Oh. Absolutely anything will kill her at this point. She has to roll three successes to get back up. Unless she's stabilized, but I, I don't know if any of us are going to help her. The third cultist is going to retreat back to the male cultist that was making the rounds. He will draw his scimitar and enter the fray. <laughs> By chance, does Jack see Phantom walking down? <laughs> Phantom, are you doing anything whatsoever to hide that fact? Absolutely not. <laughs> Just straight marching on down. At this point, I don't know if we're going to be much help in the fight, so I'm going to take the long way around. And then I have a plan for those back two cultists that should be, should be okay. In theory, of course. So those back two cultists basically are going to ready an action to counterattack if they are approached. That will end both of their turns. So now it is Imhotep. I am going to look at Mary, point at Margaret and go, we want this one alive, right? Uh, originally, by this point, any one of them will do. We just need one alive. I want to ask them some questions. What if you pick the wrong one? <laughs> They're like, no, oh, this person had an encyclopedic knowledge. Wait a minute. Raggy, I thought I had Spare the Dying. Apparently I don't. And we're going to go fight Dracula. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase. I do have Spare the Dying, but I do not have it set right now is the problem. Ruh -roh. It's okay. It's just the stabilizer. We could probably medicine check our way through. You can use a medicine check to do the same thing, just not as efficiently. Yeah, can I try that? Can I do a medicine check with her? Go ahead and roll medicine. Uh, that is an unnatural 20. With an unnatural 20... 
you are able to stabilize her. Good. So she is still downed, but is no longer dying. Yep, so that is my action. Okay, so Larry, it is your turn. I, away from the drawbridge, about face, walk down the hall towards the group where the big fighting is happening. I'm going to kind of step through and see that they sort of have it managed here. Uh, and I'm going to kind of take a look around and turn and see the two down the hall readying themselves. And I want to walk towards them carefully. I want to put my hands up in the air and go, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sure this has all been a big misunderstanding. Can I just talk to you two for a second? To try and get them to put their weapons down. Roll persuasion. And are you wearing a cultist robe? Yes. I did get one from Carmilla. Then roll persuasion with advantage. Okay. So yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> See, that's not bad. 19. With a 19... They both hesitantly look to each other, look back at you, and say, All right, then. Go on, explain yourself. Uh, I, I want to walk a little closer. So, you're all here for Rainer, right? You're either uh, all for him, about him. I don't know if you're here for any uh, other reasons. Very persuasive so far, Larry. <laughs> yes, this is established. Okay. What would it take for me to convince you and your friends to leave this place? Because I have a, a bad suspicion something not great is going to happen tonight. Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm a lot more scared of Rainer than I am of you. Oh. Yeah, you know, that's fair. Rainer's this uh, big scary vampire guy. I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy. And then I want to speak in a much lower voice to them. I know if you were to leave this place, Rainer might try and kill you, try and torture you. But what if I were to say what I could do to you could be so much worse? Ooh, Larry. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Ooh, Larry. You see, Rainer and I, though not um, exactly of the same power set, Get some of our powers from a very similar source, and I have uh, a terrible curse. It's some might say it's worse than death. Once a month, you feel your bones crack and pull and rip and tear as a demon from who knows where envelops your body and kills and destroys all you know and hold dear. And you would think. You would think doing something like that to somebody would be so difficult. It would require a great, immense amount of power to inflict something so terrible onto someone. But, um, what if I were to say to you that I could do that simply by, uh, I don't know, let's say, um, simply licking a knife and then nicking you with it. That's all it would take to completely turn your life upside down, to ruin it. You could never go back to the life you've known. Or, and I want to get a little bit closer to him. I've had a lot of time to, to think this over, and I might not even need to nick you. I could... It might just take me spitting in your eye to inflict you with a curse that would destroy you. And you've let me get so close to you. I want to be nice here. And ask kindly that you take your mortal friends and anyone you know and leave this place because I know Rainer might be up to something absolutely terrible and horrendous and that that will happen tonight but when I said something terrible might happen tonight I was not talking about him if you don't already have a point of inspiration I do damn it <laughs> and roll Intimidation with advantage. All the advantage. Dear Lord, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> that's like when Spider-Man gets serious. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's like... Um, that, thank goodness, is a 21. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you see them we themselves. Wet in their robes. I want them to see the sincerity and sadness in my eyes as I tell them this. 
it would be so easy. And I don't know if I can hold back doing terrible things anymore. But I'd like to try this just one more time. So please. Without saying a word, the cultists turn around and very quickly walk away. And you are out of combat. We are the outcasts, the misfits you might say. We deal with the nightmares that you run away from every single day. We know the world is a gruesome little place. But us outsiders, we've developed quite a taste For the grisly and morbid, the ghastly and the horrid We know it's awful, dreadful, but we like it Just another haunted night, shrouded with unearthly fright So when you're oh so terrified, you know who to call The world is falling apart Take you to heart Some monsters and creatures and spirits and specters and all Let's all have a ball I just want to say, like, you know, as Janae, I am so, so attracted to Larry right now in this moment. <laughs> Yes, I have the AC on 68. My palms are sweating. <laughs> My face is scorched. Yay! I've been waiting to have a moment with this guy for so freaking long. <laughs> You're not the only one now. 